These fibers have the least resistance to muscle fatigue, and their predominant color is white. The body's diverse requirements of its skeletal muscles, for example to generate rapid movements in some cases but to maintain high levels of tension, without fatigue, in the cases of other muscles, are such that the muscle fibers forming some muscles have different properties than muscle fibers forming other muscles whose main function and activity is significantly. Let us now proceed to cardiac muscle. As discussed earlier, cardiac muscle tissue is only found in the heart. Highly coordinated contractions of cardiac muscle pump blood into the vessels of the circulatory system. Similar to skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle is striated and organized into sarcomeres, possessing the same bending organization as skeletal muscle. However, cardiac muscle fibers are shorter than skeletal muscle fibers and usually contain only one nucleus, which is located in the central region of the cell. Cardiac muscle fibers also possess many mitochondria and myoglobin, as ATP is produced primarily through aerobic metabolism. Cardiac muscle fibers cells also are extensively branched and are connected to one another at their ends by intercalated discs. An intercalated disc allows the cardiac muscle cells to contract in a wave-like pattern so that the heart can work as a pump. Intercalated discs are part of the sarcolemma and contain two structures important in cardiac muscle contraction, gap junctions and desmosomes. A gap junction forms channels between adjacent cardiac muscle fibers that allow the depolarizing current produced by cations to flow from one cardiac muscle cell to the next. This joining is called electric coupling, and in cardiac muscle it allows the quick transmission of action potentials and the coordinated contraction of the entire heart. This network of electrically connected cardiac muscle cells creates a functional unit of contraction called a syncytium. The remainder of the intercalated disc is composed of desmosomes. A desmosome is a cell structure that anchors the ends of cardiac muscle fibers together so the cells do not pull apart during the stress of individual fibers contracting. Contractions of the heart, heartbeats, are controlled by specialized cardiac muscle cells called pacemaker cells that directly control heart rate. Although cardiac muscle cannot be consciously controlled, the pacemaker cells respond to signals from the autonomic nervous system, ANS, to speed up or slow down the heart rate. The pacemaker cells can also respond to various hormones that modulate heart rate to control blood pressure. The wave of contraction that allows the heart to work as a unit, called a functional syncytium, begins with the pacemaker cells. This group of cells is self-excitable and able to depolarize to threshold and fire action potentials on their own, a feature calidator hythmicity, they do this at set intervals which determine heart rate. Because they are connected with gap junctions to surrounding muscle fibers and the specialized fibers of the heart's conduction system, the pacemaker cells are able to transfer the depolarization to the other cardiac muscle fibers in a manner that allows the heart to contract in a coordinated manner. Another feature of cardiac muscle is its relatively long action potentials in its fibers, having a sustained depolarization plata. The plata is produced by Ka plus plus entry though voltage gated calcium channels in the sarcolemma of cardiac muscle fibers. This sustained depolarization and Ka plus plus entry provides for a longer contraction than is produced by an action potential in skeletal muscle. Unlike skeletal muscle, a large percentage of the Ka++ that initiates contraction in cardiac muscles comes from outside the cell rather than from the S. Lastly the smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is a type of muscle tissue which is used by various systems to apply pressure to vessels and organs. Smooth muscle is composed of sheets or strands of smooth muscle cells. These cells have fibers of actin and myosin which run through the cell and are supported by a framework of other proteins. Smooth muscle contracts under certain stimuli as ATP is freed for use by the myosin. The amount of ATP released depends on the intensity of the stimuli, allowing smooth muscle to have a graded contraction as opposed to the on or off contraction of skeletal muscle. As said earlier, comma smooth muscle tissue, unlike skeletal or cardiac tissues, does not have clearly defined striations visible on the cells. This is because smooth muscle cells are organized in a different way than other muscle cells. The actin and myosin filaments in smooth muscle are arranged in a stacked pattern across the cell. 
This staircase arrangement of actin and myosin is much different than the structure in skeletal and cardiac muscle. The actin filaments, red lines, in smooth muscle run from one side of the cell to the other, connecting at dense bodies and at the cell membrane. In skeletal and cardiac muscle, the actin filaments are attached to C-plates, which hold many actin filaments and show up as dark bands under the microscope. In smooth muscle, the actin and myosin fibers are arranged in angles to each other as they run through the cell. Compared to other types of muscle comma in smooth muscle, the contraction is not controlled voluntarily by the somatic nervous system, but by signals from the autonomous nervous system, such as nerve impulses, hormones, and other chemicals released by specialized organs. Smooth muscle is specialized to contract persistently, unlike skeletal muscle which much contract and release quickly. Instead of the calcium trigger which sets off a contraction reaction, smooth muscle has more of a throttle, like in a car. A nerve impulse or outside stimulus reaches the cell, which tells it to release calcium. Smooth muscle cells do not have a special protein on actin which prevents myosin from binding. Rather, actin and myosin are constantly binding. But, myosin can only hold on and crawl forward when given energy. Inside smooth muscle cells is a complex pathway which allows the level of calcium to control the amount of ATP available to myosin. Thus, when the stimulus is removed, the cells do not relax right away. Myosin continues to bind to actin and crawl along the filaments until the level of calcium falls. This specialized function of contracting for long periods and hold that force is why smooth muscle has been adapted to many areas of the body. Smooth muscle lines many parts of the circulatory system come a digestive system, and is even responsible for raising the hairs on your arm. One known phenomena is known as peristalsis and is responsible for moving food through the many twists and turns of the gut. Now, the motor neurons that innervate skeletal muscle fibers are called alpha motor neurons. As the alpha motor neuron enters a muscle, it divides into several branches, each innervating a muscle fiber. One alpha motor neuron along with all of the muscle fibers it innervates is a motor unit. The size of the motor unit correlates with the function of the muscle. In muscles involved with fine, Coordinated control, the motor units are very small with 3 to 5 muscle fibers per motor neuron. Classically, skeletal muscle fibers can be categorized according to their speed of contraction and their resistance to fatigue include slow twitch oxidative, type I, muscle fibers, fast twitch oxidative glycolytic, type IIA, muscle fibers, and fast twitch glycolytic, type IIX, fibers. Fast twitch, type 2, fibers develop tension 2 to 3 times faster than slow twitch, type I, fibers. How fast a fever can contract is related to how long it takes for completion of the cross-bridge cycle. This variability is due to different varieties of myosin molecules and how quickly they can hydrolyze ATP. Recall that it is the myosin head that splits ATP. Fast twitch fibers have a more rapid act pace, Splitting of ATP into ADP plus pi, ability. Fast twitch fibers also pump Ka2 plus ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum very quickly, so these cells have much faster twitches than the slower variety. Thus, fast twitch fibers can complete multiple contractions much more rapidly than slow twitch fibers. Obviously our muscles are capable of generating differing levels of force during whole muscle contraction. Some actions require much more force generation than others, think of picking up a pencil compared to picking up a bucket of water. One way to increase the amount of force generated is to increase the number of motor units that are firing at a given time. We say that more motor units are being recruited. The greater the load we are trying to move the more motor units that are activated. However, even when generating the maximum force possible, we are only able to use about 1 slash 3 of our total motor units at one time. Normally they will fire asynchronously in an effort to generate maximum force and prevent the muscles from becoming fatigued. As fibers begin to fatigue they are replaced by others in order to maintain the force. There are times, however, when under extreme circumstances we are able to recruit even more motor units. Recall that a muscle twitch can last up to 100 milliseconds and that an action potential lasts only 1 to 2 miss also, 
With the muscle twitch, there is not refractory period so it can be re-stimulated at any time. If you were to stimulate a single motor unit with progressively higher frequencies of action potentials, you would observe a gradual increase in the force generated by that muscle. This phenomenon is called wave summation. Eventually the frequency of action potentials would be so high that there would be no time for the muscle to relax between the successive stimuli and it would remain totally contracted, a condition called tetanus. Essentially, with the high frequency of action potentials there isn't time to remove calcium from the citosol. Maximal force, then, is generated with maximum recruitment and an action potential frequency sufficient to result in tetanus. We all know that muscles contract, but what we might not know is how they contract. More specifically, what happens inside our muscle cells to cause contraction? Question mark. Now let us discuss how the contractile proteins comma actin and myosin interact with one another during cross-bridge cycling. Cross-bridge refers to the attachment of myosin with actin within the muscle cell. All muscle types, whether we're talking about skeletal, cardiac, or smooth, contract by cross-bridge cycling that is, repeated attachment of actin and myosin within the cell. Starts with involved protein conformational changes that alter the affinity of the myosin binding to actin, pi, or ADP, 1. When myosin initially binds to actin, the actomyosin is in a weakly bound low force, 2. With the subsequent release of pi, 3, cross bridge transforms into strongly bound high force state and goes through the power stroke. 4. ADP is then released, returning the cross bridge to the rigor complex. Again, step one cross bridge formation, phosphorylated myosin head attaches to an actin myofilament step two the power stroke, one, ADP and pi are released from the myosin head two, myosin head changes to bend, low energy state three, shape change pulls the actin towards the M line step three cross bridge detachment, ATP attaches to myosin, breaking the cross bridge step four cocking of the myosin head, Attached ADP is hydrolyzed by myosin actase into ADP plus pi, bringing it back to a high energy state. Don't worry, we are already near to the finish. You can do it. Myosin light chain phosphatase, MULP, catalyzes the dephosphorylation of the RLGs. Dephosphorylating the RLGs of myosin inhibits myosin cross bridge formation with actin, but dephosphorylating myosin already on actin reduces its off rate, forming the so called latch state. The latch state corresponds to the situation where smooth muscle holds tension at low rates of ATP hydrolysis. Although smooth muscle can develop the same force as striated muscle, it does so with much less myosin and at much slower rates. The ATP consumption by smooth muscle actomyosin is 1 100 1 500 that of striated muscle, whereas force development is on the order of 1,000 times slower in smooth muscle. Regulation of cross-bridge cycling by myosin light chain phosphorylation and dephosphorylation in smooth muscle. MULC phosphorylates thrilx and activates cross-bridge formation between myosin and actin, initiating the cross-bridge cycling, inner cycle. This cycle is deactivated by dephosphorylation of the light chains by MULC. MULC can also dephosphorylate the light chains while myosin is attached to the actin filaments. This produces an alternate cross-bridge cycle, outer cycle, that has slower kinetics. This is the latch state that produces force with little expenditure of energy. In effect, it makes the muscle stiff. The regulation of the phosphorylation of myosin light chain, MLC, is a central process in the control of smooth muscle cell contraction. The Ka2 plus hyphen colmodulin activated MLC kinase, MULC, phosphorylates MLC com whereas its dephosphorylation is catalyzed by the MLC phosphatase, MULC. While Ka2 plus appears to be the major regulator of the activity of MULC, regulation of MULC occurs in a Ka2 plus hyphen independent manner. The classic pathway through which PPRs increase smooth muscle contraction is initiated by coupling of the receptors to G-proteins of the P family. Activation of P results in an increase in the activity of hyphenisoforms of phospholipase C leading to the formation of inositol 1,4,5 hyphen trisphosphate and the release of intracellularly stored Ka2+.
Ka2 plus then together with Kalmatulin activates milk resulting in the phosphorylation of MLC and an increase in smooth muscle tone. In various smooth muscle types, evidence has been provided that the Ka2 plus leading to milk activation is not solely derived from intracellular stores, but can also be supplied through a transmembrane influx via particular cation channels. This is strongly suggested by the fact that the permediated contraction of various smooth muscle cell types can be inhibited by the blockade of L-type Ka2 plus channels or by genetic inactivation of the genes encoding the pore forming subunit of L-type calcium channels. Opening of L-type Ka2 plus channels results from depolarization of smooth muscle cells which may be induced through the per-dependent activation of cation channels like transient receptor potential channels.